colleagues? It's exactly five past um, two. Welcome to all the colleagues um, to our spring day webinar. Um, Timba, can I hand over to you? Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Anita. Good afternoon, um, everyone. Good afternoon to the colleagues from GTAC, and um, we welcome our guests from outside of GTAC, um, whoever you are. You are most welcome to this session. As Anita has already said, this is part of the weekly um, GTAC webinars, and today, um, we are having a presentation on the planning, design, and construction of township services at Salvagor Precinct in preparation for four national departments office accommodation PPP projects. Um, we have the pleasure of having um, one of our colleagues from the PPP unit of GTEC, and that is Ms. Nontan Tlamjali, who is a director for transaction advisory services and public-private partnerships. And to give you a little bit of um, a summary on what she will be uh, talking to us about this afternoon, this is one of the five precincts precincts forming part of the Tswane inner city regeneration program. Mm -hmm. This project is implemented in a collaborative effort between the National Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, GTEC, and the city of Tswane, demonstrating how government institutions can work together to deliver services. The Salvagor Precinct development is a mixed use government precinct that will include four public private partnership projects for national government head offices. It is being developed in the following phases phase one, bulk and internal engineering services and construction of the head offices. Phase two, is business one Erevan out of out to market for development and phase three is inter integrated housing development um, so this is the, the the basis on the basis of today's presentation shortly before i give over to miss mjali i just want to outline um, a few of um some issues of housekeeping if you if if colleagues could please keep our sound on mute in case there may be some feedback in the background we would appreciate that very much and secondly um we would leave the questions and answers session to the end because we don't have the luxury of you know a lot of of, of time on our part so i'm afraid that if we allow questions intermittently, we may lose out where um, 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 time might run, run, run out quite quickly before we finish on the content of the, of the presentation. The slot has been set to end at a quarter past um, three, and we would generally expect the presenter to round up at about 20 to three, quarter to three to allow for that um, last um, 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 tail end for questions and answers. And um, I will now switch off my camera and hand over to Ms. Nontantla Mjali. Over to you, sis. Um, good afternoon, colleagues. Sorry, I had 
If we could just bear with the presenter um, just a few seconds. Um, colleagues, can we just give Nontlantla two minutes? Her computer um, is just restarting and she's just asked that we bear with her and give her a minute for it to restart. Thank you. Colleagues, apologies. 
uh, it would seem that um, the gremlins are out to play this afternoon and I see we're so privileged to have um, the head of finance with us this afternoon. Maybe it's because we're talking big money. Um, but um, Nontlantla's computer has, has just frozen, so she just locked off and is locking on um, again. But um, so uh, apologies for this, but you know, this is what's happening with this is technology at its best. Let's just see, um, let's give her a minute or two. Um, Timba, maybe in the meantime, I don't know if you have the background. Maybe you can just give us a little bit of general background. Ah, Marcus. Marcus is saying, and I hope some of you joined us this week when we did the, the, the winter school. Um, our GTAC annual winter school was actually all about infrastructure and at local government level. So it's very, um, very good. It's, it's very relevant for this discussion this afternoon. Uh, we had students and professionals. Um, please go and visit GTAC's website. Anita, maybe you can just put it in the chat, the Knowledge Hub, because all the resources are there. We had the top, top industry, government, academics in the country speaking around infrastructure investment in South Africa and at the local government level, fantastic data. If you're looking for data, it's on our knowledge hub. So please go and um, please go and, and, and visit our website. Um, Anita will put it in the chat. In the meantime, I'm just wondering whether um, Sorry, Elaine. Yes, is she back? Nonflantla no. is back, yeah. I just no. spoke to her now. So, Nonflantla, can we hand back to you now? Yes, uh, thank you and apologies. The computer just um, switched off by itself and I had to restart it. Um, but thanks for your patience. Let me share the presentation. Um, can you see the presentation? Yes, yes. If you could just put it on presentation mode. Presentation mode. Do I go? Um, okay. On the bottom. There. Okay, there you found yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, take it away. Okay. Good afternoon again, colleagues. Um, just to reiterate, the presentation is about the planning design and construction of township services at the Salvoco precinct in preparation for the four PPP projects. Um, I'll be doing the presentation with Franda Lawrence. Um, she is my colleague from DPW. As Temba alluded in the introduction, this project is the collaboration uh, between three in state institutions, there's the city of Tswane, uh, DPW as a developer and GTEC, um, whose main role is to provide technical support by virtue of our involvement in PPPs. Okay, um, just quickly the contents, content um, to be the background, the governance structure, project description, scope of work, where we are with the project. And then um, Franda will then just talk overall about Savoko precinct and other precincts as well. And then the, the master plan. This project um, stems from the cabinet directive. So there was a drive to make sure that um, all the government departments, special national departments stay in the inner city as part of assisting in the inner city regeneration. So there was a cabinet memo in 1997, and then there's been progressive work over the years to, to create the framework for the delivery of these projects. Um, yeah, so as part of 
of uh, the implementation of this program. There's been some MOUs between the city, DPW and, and GTEC. Okay. In terms of the governance structure, um, we, as I've just stated, we have collaborative um, agreements. So the city and DPW started with the engagements um, in 2005. And the whole idea is just to make sure that there's coordinated planning um, in, in the delivery of the government estate within the city of Tswane. And then in 2015, there was an agreement between DPW and GTEC. Some of you who might be aware of the departments that have been done as PPPs, um, I think we have the first one was DTI, and, and we have uh, basic education, we have DECO, and we have environmental affairs and stats SA. When those projects were done, the individual departments would register the projects on their own and DPW would, would merely just provide the, the assistance in terms of their mandate as the custodian of state properties. So in 2015, the then DG of Public Works, um, Mr. Lavanto, um, decided that it would make sense for DPW to work together with the PPP unit so that even if the projects are delivered as PPPs, we work together as a team from day one. So that's, that was then the, the, the start of this relationship that we have um, with DPW. We then send, um, signed the Memorandum of General Agreement, and then for each project that is done, there is a Memorandum of Particular Agreement. So um, the, we have a Memorandum of Particular Agreement with the Department of Public Works, where they requested um, GTEC to assist them with the planning and, and implementation of the services at Salvocop. Um, that involved the procurement of the consultants and um, now we are at the stage where the contractor is now started with the actual construction. So this that, that's now the agreement between DPW and GTEC. And where the working together assist is to make sure that there is an alignment. Um, for instance, one of the things that we do when a department wants to um, explore the construction of their head office. We will work together with public works and consult public finance and the budget office to ensure um, that the budget is there. If the budget is not there, then we explore, for instance, um, registering the project as a PPP. Um, Franda will touch um, more on the enabling, enabling platforms um, basically the whole um, relationship with the city of Tswane. Um, this is just an aerial view of the site. Um, the, the, so the, the part in green, that's where the, the four head offices will be. Um, as you can see, it's correctional services. Uh, Department of Home Affairs, Higher Education and Training and Social Development um, together with its entities. For those maybe who are not familiar with the area, this is Hosimamburu, Hosimamburu Street. This is the prison. So the Salvocop site is the site just across the prison where there is um, Freedom Park and at the moment, the state's SA is already there. It was also constructed as a PPP. Um, the project, so our role, the role of GTEC in the whole program, as I've just alluded, is to provide support to DPW 
because DPW has a mandate to provide office accommodation for state departments. So as part of that support, we then procured um, the engineering team to design um, engineering services for the site because um, when the PPPs come on board, the site must be ready. So it's the role of DPW as a developer to make sure that all the services are there from the roads, water, electricity, etc. So the project now that GTEC through the PPP unit is doing in supporting um, DPW is for so that key deliverables um, it's phase 1A the installation of bulk and in internal engineering services. So where we are at the moment, um, the contractor has been appointed um, and also we have another contract for the electrical contractor. So we've got two contracts, one for civils and the other one for ele electricity. Maybe yeah. The next the next slides now talk about the the scope of work. We have uh, five packages overall. Works package one is for internal civil works, so it will include the roads and stormwater upgrades, the new roads and stormwater, the roads and stormwater in, in, at the intersections and then the bulk water and sanitation infrastructure. Works package, um, or another works package, which, which is part of works package one, is the precinct landscaping. So throughout the precinct, there will be landscaping along all the, these roads, the core road, skill board, and all the internal roads, including where States SA is. And then works package three is for the reservoir. So there is an existing reservoir at the moment, 27 megaliters. Um, so to accommodate for all this new development, then there was a need for an additional reservoir. And then as part of that, there will be an upgrading of the bulk water supply um, within the precinct. And then works package four is for internal reticulation. Um, it's for the upgrading and provision of new electrical infrastructure. Um, internal in the in the precinct and also the distribution and reticulation, um, including the street lights. And then we have works package seven. That one is outside the precinct because it's, it involves the upgrading of the sewer line. Um, that's the blue line there, which is located um, between WF Gomo Street, along Koi Street to Boom Street. And then, um, so this is just the high level summary where we are at the moment. Um, the project cost is 377 million. And the program started in 14 October. So the the site was handled was handed over to the contractor in October. And the the, the estimated completion date is um, just over two years. So where we where are we at the moment? Um, so overall progress is um, at fifteen percent. Works package one, um, the site establishment has been completed. So it's currently they are busy with the clearing and crapping of the roads um, and the excavations. Works package three, um, as you can see there as well, they are busy with the excavations and the construction of the reservoir is underway. Um, works package four, um, the materials have been procured. And then um, works package five, works package, um, sorry, works package seven. 
the off sewer line there's had to be a redesign um, because there are issues of access you know there are informal settlements where the original design was so the engineers are busy at the moment with the, an alternative design to make sure that um, the, the sewer line can bypass the areas where there are informal settlements. And then um, this is just an overall program just to demonstrate where we are. Um, maybe one of the things that we could I could share in this project um, was just the, the issue of um, the community. As you can appreciate, um, such a big projects, um, there is a need to make sure that the community surrounding the project, that it benefits from the, from the implementation of the project. There is a project steering committee that was established, just like it's done with any big project. The project steering committee comprises uh, members of the community who were together with the contractor to make sure that um, issues of um, local employment um, and anything that would benefit the, the community that it's coordinated through the PSC. Um, we've had some stoppages um, along the line, the closure of the site um, and other issues but through the intervention of um, the city of Tswane, as well as the Minister of Public Works, um, we are now back on track. And, um, you know, it's also a lesson on how, on the importance of making sure that um, the community is throughout engaged and um, to make sure that the, the project, you know, moves, moves smoothly. Um, these are the latest pictures of uh, the developments on site. The one on the right, that's where the reservoir is. I think um, I think they've moved further than this. But um, yeah, this this is just an overview of um, the, the the site, the, the work that's happening on site. And then this is another um, picture. That's that's SA there in the background for those who are not familiar with um, where the the department is, and this is some of the the works that's happening on site. Um, this this was this picture was taken on the day when there was a sort turning, um, where all the ministers or the departments that are going to be located they they attended the sort turning that was led by the minister of public works. Um, yeah, this is also just a high level program. Um, as you can see, it starts from when the the whole program was conceptualized in 2008, when um, Public Works procured the land and all the planning that has been done to date. So the last the last column just indicates where we are in you know the appointment of the of the contractor and the work that is currently take, taking place on site um i think um i'll hand over to to franda um yeah she can take it from here so she'll just give us an overview of um what this inner city regeneration program is about um and how it will assist in the development of the city um, into the future. Over to you, Franda. Thank you very much um, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to jointly present today. Um, it is such an honor. Uh, just uh, by way of introduction, my name is Franda Lawrence. I'm a Chief Architect and uh, Joint Program Manager for the Tswana Inner City Regeneration Program. Um, so, uh, just continuing from uh, North Lantla is um, this is the Sofa Corp master plan that was completed. So, again, jointly uh, with GTAC, what we did is we appointed service providers to complete a precinct master plan, 
which constitutes an implementation uh, framework, a development framework, as well as a management plan. Um, it is imperative to uh, obviously maintain and manage the investment from the state side uh, going forward. Um, and we are fortunate to have uh, within the PBP realm have the concession period um, looking after the buildings in terms of facilities management. So we needed to really just make sure that from an urban or precinct perspective that we that we maintain and manage the the infrastructure going forward. So um, this uh, image indicates the head offices, which is to the north. Um, that North Lantla mentioned. So it's the four head offices on the northern section of the precinct. Um, together with Stats SA already completed in 2016, we then have a total of 360,000 square meters of head office space. The remainder of the precinct entails five uh, business one zoned properties, which will be commercial um, activities, um, adding value to this mixed use precinct. Those properties uh, will go to market uh, hopefully in the next year or two. Um, obviously, we need to just uh, enable the precinct with the installation of the bulk and internal services. Um, and then, of course, at the center of, of this precinct is the housing component, which is our phase three. Uh, Pre-planning has already commenced on this phase. Um, so all phases run in parallel. Um, and uh, the priority, of course, is just to, to make sure that um, all the developments have access to services. So we are engaging both the city uh, Department of Human Settlements and HDA for, for the housing component. So if we look at the government estate, uh, the Twani implementation plan, so the entire Twani implementation plan is to provide, first and foremost, conducive and um, modernized head office accommodation. Uh, to our 42 client apartments um, within the uh, city of Tuane, aligned to the cabinet directive, which indicates that all government departments are to remain within the inner city. So if you look at this uh, map, you'll note that there's a darker outline that demarcates the inner city boundary of, of Tuane. And that's the planning um, section that we are focusing on in terms of, of coordinated planning. So in the on the top side, you have on the northern section of the city, you have the Northern Gateway. We have five prioritized precincts. So on the top section is Northern Gateway. Then just next to it, uh, off of the um, Ceremonium Boulevard is the Civic Precinct. Anchoring to the east is the Capitol Hill Precinct uh, surrounding the Union Buildings. And then when you um, take Nelson Mandela down to the south, we have the Southern Gateway Precinct and prioritized right now is the Salva Corp. Um, within that, we also have the Berea North site, which is the current construction of the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development Aid Office as you come into the city. At the center, we have the Church Square Precinct. And then, of course, anchored to the west is the city's um, Capital West. Um, Capital West is predominantly housing at this point in time um, in, uh, in accordance with the city's plan. So the government estate uh, will be executed in three phases. Phase one is the construction of the mega projects uh, based on pre-feasibility development proposals and location opportunities that we complete in-house at DPW. These projects, um, from a viability point of view, constitute the construction of a consolidated head office on state-owned land. So uh, that's 14 head offices um, that account for about 915,000 square meters, and it's costed at this point in time just over 20 billion rand in investment and project cost. We currently have about 10 PPPs registered. Um, we are expecting to register four more um, this year. Um, and then obviously jointly collaboratively working on that to send that to market. Phase two include the refurbishment of the existing uh, state buildings we have and assets. That's just over 500,000 square meters, about 12 projects. And then phase three is predominantly looking at the smaller entities and agencies that will be dealt with in terms of an infill kind of opportunity based uh, scenario because we have an existing city. 
Um, so that that is just the government estate plan um, on a macro from a macro scale. Um, so the city of Tswane, of course, we align to their spatial development frameworks, the IDPs, and then uh, the national development plan. Uh, which is to create a city of excellence and the timelines associated uh, here too is 2030. Um, I think this is just the development plan that I that I mentioned previously, um, just to indicate the vision that we have. Um, and then the investment strategy for this entire program is really to create destina destinations uh, for equal access to live, work and play. That's the, the mixed use component of these precincts by leveraging on the catalytic development of the government state within precincts. So we're uh, our mandate stems um, from the Guillermo and it speaks to creating um, government assets in the city. But obviously part and parcel to that is is massive um, infrastructure uh, development. Um, and, and we just feel from a mixed use perspective, it, it makes sense from an investment and socioeconomic point of view to utilize these developments and, and respond to the social ills as well as provide opportunities for SMMEs, private sector to collaborate and then um, systematically start developing the city and, and really turning it around. So currently we're in phase one, which is the governmental anchor and commercial focus of these precincts. After that, um, the critical mass will be established, which, mean, which means we can then start um, focusing on the mixed use uh, implementation and going to market for that. And with that, we are coordinating with all our client departments, National Treasury and the city, of course. And then um, phase three is the residential and focus uh, and the social focus. Um, and then future phases, of course, is just to, to maintain competitiveness in the market. And uh, very, very important is the maintenance and managers, management of these assets into the future. Uh, next slide, thank you. Thanks so much. Um, as I mentioned, phase one is um, 915,000 squares. So the entire portfolio at this point in time is just over 1.43 million square meters of head of space. Um, phase one is the 14 projects. Um, this slide just provides an overview of the status of these projects and where we are uh, specifically on the PPP project status side. As I mentioned, we have 10 already registered as potential PPPs. Um, and uh, we are working together to to finalize those processes and really go to market as soon as possible. Uh, typically, the coordination that this involves and and the value add that we've um, that we've established up to now since our collaboration started is really um, for DPW to to absorb the risk for the pre planning and planning. So really to make sure that we assist the clients in fulfilling the pre-planning and planning mandate. Uh, so that entails the completion of a pre-feasibility in all of the planning directives. And then whilst the project is registered and the feasibility for the potential PPP continues, sure. we continue with the, the property or the land enablement, which is the land use rights applications, the specialist studies, um, the precinct um, plans, as well as the management plans and um, the installation of the bulk and internal services. So we run these processes in parallel to the PPP process. And then by the time the PPP feasibility is done in procurement, um, we have a legal and serviced site, which really just from, from risk and, and time and quality point of view just comes together really nice. Um, and and Salvacorp is our first. <laughs> Um, project and, and we're really just seeing uh, the benefits in working together and, and we're very fortunate. And of course, we we twig and, and change where we, you know, this is a reiterative process and a learning curve. So we change um, and we learn from from previous projects and and, and mistakes. Uh, thank you so much, Lord Tankler. Um, OK, so this is just the program information. It's predominantly just um uh, you know the the crux of the matter uh, that i've that myself and not has described but it really comes down to creating um equitable uh, assets and infrastructure in the city and having a positive development impact 
And so from that point of view, we are looking at prioritizing economic transformation and job creation. With this entire program, we are hoping to, within various um, phases and sectors in the market, pre uh, create about 99,000 jobs. Um, we also prioritize spatial inclusivity and transformation. We're looking into establishing circular economies um, and sustainable infrastructure, social cohesion and safe communities. Safety has become of paramount importance and um, I think that's come through in the precinct management uh, frameworks that we are completing and, and doing jointly with the city. Um, leveraging funding from public and private sector, of course I've, I've touched on that, and then just spatial integration and human settlements. So we forged partnerships and networking opportunities with client departments um, and various stakeholders and to, to achieving this, uh, this massive undertaking and goal. So we'll let you know how it goes, <laughs> but this is the plan. Uh, now, thanks, North Atla. So, just back to Solver Corp. Um, in terms of the development framework that we've completed jointly, this um, is just representative of the development package. So, each client department which have registered a PPP, as well as the five business one, Erwin, will receive a development package. The development package is inclusive of um, all of the required documentation that you would need. Um, for a legal property, service property, as well as a set of performance guidelines. This is both from a precinct and urban perspective, as well as the landscaping perspective. So from a landscape point of view, we have um, presented a precinct landscape master plan to the city, which was also approved. Um, so all of the specific properties would need to adhere to the, those specific guidelines. And so holistically, um, we, we are hoping that this will help us achieve the, the greater vision for the precinct. Um, and so, of course, it speaks to your um, your uh, height restrictions, your, um, your boundary lines, um, urban vibrancy, um, street lighting, frontage, and, you know, creating civic and open spaces um, from, from a whole. Thank you. The implementation framework uh, speaks to the three phases of the implementation of this precinct that we have mentioned. So um, it's this uh, document just provides us with an overview and specifically the timelines that we need to uh, adhere to from a development point of view. Um, we know market changes uh, rapidly, um, infrastructure not <laughs> so quick to respond to markets. And so we really just have to make sure that we stay within this framework um, so that we don't miss opportunities in the market or present um, developments to the market that is no longer um, a need. Um, we have also um, presented the overall uh, costing pro or projected land value. Um, so so from, from an interest point of view, uh, we bought this property for about 76 million and with the implementation and land use rights in place, it is costed just over about, uh, I don't want to lie at this point, but I think it was just over 300 million. I can double check that. But so we we definitely from a value um, add perspective, we, we hope to achieve that. Um, and so, yeah, this just speaks to the three phases and, and how we need to respond to that in terms of bulk and timing. Okay, thank you. This so the development timeline just speaks to what I just mentioned. So, from from a holistic coordinated point of view, we've just jotted down you know where we need to start implementing security management. Obviously, from phase one, um, it takes a form, and then when we move into phases two and three, you know we we escalate the need uh, for the security. Um, we also embarking on a process uh, with jointly with Prasa to design and construct a new pedestrian bridge, which will allow us unfettered access to the Gau train station across um, from the railway line. There's currently a bridge, but it's really um, not adequate and dilapidated. Um, and then, of course, just um, 
looking at all of the mechanisms to add value to this precinct, whether it's, um, you know, the extension of the Gau train um, line into the precinct in, in the interim, or whilst we work on the bridge, um, as well as the mixed use components um, from, from retail sector, um, colleges, uh, healthcare centres, when we need to start uh, marketing those um, specific requirements for the precincts. And it just really keeps us um, in line with our development timelines to just make sure that we activate um, all of these requirements holistically. Yeah, thanks. Is that it? Yeah, I think that was the last slide. Um, Fantastic. Yes, maybe before, just in closing, um, you know, Technical details um, are easy. Um, what I've learned through this project is that um, the most important thing is the, the, the human element. Um, when, when we started to work with DPW in 2015, I think we were not even sure whether this project can will be implemented. Um, I've walked the journey with Franda and Aniri, you know, the other project manager, um, when they were submitting um, memos or motivations to get the budget, um, when they were dealing with the city of Tswane to get the the plans improved. So it's, it's been a very interesting journey. And, um, and for me, this is one of the projects that indicate how as different state departments, we can work together. Um, and for the PPP unit, traditionally, our role was to advise on PPP projects once a department has registered a project. But I think when we move to GTEC, um, our work now, we go beyond just advising on, on, on PPPs. We support institutions, um, on anything that would unpack or that would unlock the potential for a PPP. Um, as an example, um, this is one of the, 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 the projects. So at the moment, we, we have four of the PPPs that we are working on. Um, Department of Home Affairs, we, we've concluded the feasibility study. We are busy at the moment with um, the RFP, we are preparing to go to the market for the private partner. Um, and in the team as well, we are working together with uh, Franda DPW. She's there to make sure that um, whatever is designed is in line with the, the, the standards that are set by DPW. And then um, we have um, the, the other three projects, correctional services, we are also close to finishing the feasibility study. And then social development, we are just about to commence with the feasibility study. And then higher education as well, we are just waiting for them to confirm that we can procure the transaction advisors for them. But um, it's 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 been very interesting, you know, through sitting on evaluation committees with DPW and our colleagues um, in the PPP unit. So yeah, um, and also working with um, the communities, you know, the role that the city of Tswane plays is important in such projects because they are responsible for the what. So they, they play a role in making sure that um, the project steering committee works as it should. And then, of course, when there are tensions and conflicts, it's their responsibility as well to, to assist. But um, so far, we've been working very well with um, the city of Tswane and as well with the EPW. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What an interesting presentation. Um, what a good detail. I mean, um, having been slightly involved in some of the processes, even I, you know, am taking in as much as I can because it's different from, you know, getting your hands and having someone to really eloquently uh, lay down the detail as you you guys have. And, and, and we are grateful for Franda's participation as well. I mean, it's always been great working with her and the rest of the DPWI family. Um, 
I have been checking on the chat. I don't see any questions, but if there may be um, questions that colleagues would want to raise, I'm now ready to note um, hands. And Anita, please um, jump in and assist where, wherever you, you can in case I don't see some, some hand or some signal. We have until a quarter past three to end the session. So we do have um, roughly around um, 19 minutes to 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 towards the to to, to the end of the of the, of of the session. Um, I don't see if there is any hand, um, colleagues. Does anyone wish to to raise a question to the presenters? Uh, I still don't see any hand. If if there are no hands, then it it it, it is clear that um, the information was um, um, presented in a in a in a manner that um, the detail given is understood. Or it could as well be that the information is 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 you know um, um, quite a handful. And and one may need to you know relook at the 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 information. And the good thing is that these uh, presentations are made available afterwards, as 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 um, 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 Anita um, 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 always uh, inform us. Um, Anita, I see you've got your hand up. Do you want to yes, add something? I do. I see. There's um, a question from Landiwe. She says. Uh, or he says, please, could you elaborate on the model of community involvement? Oh, yes, I, I didn't see it. Sorry about that. Um, Nontlantla, if you could uh, please address um, Landy West's question. OK, um, before I respond to Landy, I wanted to add something on what Temba said that maybe it could be also that it's a month end, it's Friday month end. People want to go and groove. Um, yeah, the model for of community involvement. I'm not sure what you mean, but um, every project that is taking place in a community, um, especially such large infrastructure projects where the, there is potential for for jobs. Um, there has to be a project steering com com um, committee. It's a requirement, um, I think, across the board, whether it's a national project, provincial project, or, or local government project. So um, before the project gets implemented, um, as you know, there has to be community participation. The community needs to be updated on the project that's coming into their community. The ward councillor plays a very key role because whatever is done, the ward councillor needs to be involved and they have to lead. Um, and then also, as colleagues are aware, um, every project that goes out to, to market, at least in terms of triple PFA, the regulations of 2017, 30% of the project spend must be um, to the you know triple B. So there is that element as well. So what that means in 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 real life is that that thirty percent you need to have find a way of involving local community. So when you procure the thirty percent, you need to try and identify service providers in that immediate community. If they don't have skills, then you go to the whole ward. If not, you go through the whole district and region, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, it's some of the things that when you design a project, you need to you need to have the strategies of how you're going to involve the community. Um, I'm not sure that I'm answering you, but um, I don't know, Franda, do you have anything to add? 
And uh, no, thanks a lot for that. I think you've dealt with it. It's um, yeah, it's the standard modality that's within the custodianship and ambit of the city of Tswane speaker's office uh, specifically. Um, so yeah. Thanks, thanks, colleagues. Um, anybody else? Um, um, so, Temba, maybe just I can add there. Um, there is um, there is um, I think colleagues might be familiar with the um, EPWP. So in such projects, um, when you employ people that are going to work in the project, especially for low skilled, um, for where, where you don't require like um, highly skilled people, you have to follow EPWP um, requirements and the rates. So there is a whole lot of um, issues that are involved when it comes to the community. Um, this project has two social facilitators and, and their role really is to, they play a role between the implementation of the project and the community. They, they help to resolve social issues. There is also a CLO, community liaison officer. That person is, is employed by the contractor but that person normally comes from the community because they also act as a, as a facilitator. And so when there's information that needs to be shared between, between the, the, con, the contractor and the community, the CLO plays a, plays a role there. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Um, um, well, I'm going to read, um, Oh, there is, there is one question from Rona Hing. Are EPWP candidates awarded certificates of competence at the end of the project? <laughs> I, I don't know. Flanda, can you help with this one? Uh, yes, as far as I know, uh, they are awarded with the competence certificates. Um, we have a team, an EPWP team, that is responsible for uh, the training and skills transfer. They monitor and issue the certificates in accordance with the guidelines. So as far as I know, the current guidelines makes provision for the issuing of the certificates. Thank you. Thank you, Franda. Um, Okay, I was I was just about to read the comments. Okay, Rona had uh, a comment. Thanks for an informative presentation. Well, I'm going to be their spokesperson here and say you are most welcome. And uh, Ansi Cook says, thanks, Nontantla. It's nice to see the pictures, makes it more visible in the mind. Well, indeed, Ansi, and you are most welcome. And uh, there is a comment from Ezra van Veik. This was educational. Thank you. Well, you are most welcome, Ezra. Indeed, it was educational. And without any further questions, I don't see why we should drag on um, in this uh, program if um, 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 there are no more questions. For me, right now is to thank the uh, presenters. Thank you. Nontlantla, this was, you know, a wonderful presentation. And like I said, having been involved um, somewhat um, 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 at a, you know, slight um, um, level, but I, 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 I just continue to learn a lot from this project. And Franda, thank you very much. And like I said, again, it is always a pleasure working with you and the rest of the DPWI team um, Anita, thank you very much. I mean, you um, 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 are a great deal of an organizer when it comes to things like this, and we are quite grateful for your support. And what would uh, what would be what would a webinar like this be without the audience? You know, our audience internally and and from outside. Thank you very very much and with those few words i'd like to declare this webinar um, um, um adjourned and uh, Timba, yes you, yes anita can i just ask people to quickly take a minute um and just answer the survey in the chat 
And I also just wanted to tell people that they can come and join us for our next session, which is the Funda Nati session um, on how to collaborate on, on, on Microsoft using Teams, if they would like to, that is also open to them. And thank you to the presenters and thank you to you, Temba. Um, I'll have my colleague put in the link to so that you can attend um, the, the next Funda Nati session if you'd like. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, have a good Friday afternoon and enjoy the rest of your weekend ahead. Thank you, thank you. Bye.